Welcome to another programming exam solution tutorial. We'll be looking at uh, the AQA Predator Prey model, and this time we're going to be looking at some stats and calculations. As always, this video assumes that you uh, know the scenario and that you're fairly familiar with the code at this stage. So let's have a little look. What could we calculate? Well, there could be various things to do with rabbits and warrens and there are various things you could calculate I've listed them here I'm sure there's more things in terms of foxes uh, again there's more than just that uh, but oops, sorry. but those are the, those are the some of the obvious things that we could we could calculate uh, where to display this I reckon there's a few options you could have a menu um, at each time period you could do it when the simulation exits, I quite like that, particularly these lifetime simulation stats. And as part of inspect, because then of course you can do it uh, for show detail or when you uh, use option 4 or 5. And I guess uh, there's a couple of places where there's console dot right lines actually built into a class. So I guess if we create a new subclass of some form, there could be some kind of output that had a stat about that. Right then. You're going to probably need to create some new properties and chances are that you're going to need to create some methods that are going to calculate something with that properties. The temptation when you're doing this is to calculate what you think is a sensible value, what the exam board stipulated. But just do exactly what they've asked for and nothing else. Um, it's heartbreaking if you're marking a paper and you see a student's done something really nice, but it's not what was asked for, so they didn't get any marks. Uh, and we'll have a look at an example in a minute where it's just easier for us to sort of collate all the objects that we want to try and create the stat for together and then do it as, that, as, a, as a separate array. Normally going to be displayed by calling the methods. To be honest with you, this is most of this calculation stuff isn't particularly OOP. Um, it's fairly structured. Uh, we're normally working within a class, or maybe just um, getting one property from another class. But it's it's just a simple getter. Right then. Here are the couple of examples that I want to uh, look at. I think the Warren male female ratio with uh, this particular output, uh, I think that's uh, a nice one to have a little look at. And obviously that's going to be based in the Warren class. And in the simulation class, as a sort of end of simulation type stat, I think average age of foxes killed, total number of foxes born killed would be uh, a reasonable one as well. Uh, and we're just going to display these. We won't actually have these as a, as a separate menu item. If you need to do that, you can do that. So let's have a look at uh, this male-female ratio. As you can see, we've got a couple of property... Oh, I'm not recording. I'm recording. Why is that? Hello. Sorry about that. I um, got confused because this little um, square here looks like my recording. Uh, sort of move, move the frame square. But it's because of where I've snipped the, the code. So we'll just carry on. So as you can see... Uh, we've got a couple of properties. These are initialized within the function, but they're actually properties for the whole class. And then we've got a simple loop. Hopefully you know that rabbits um, is a, an array, and uh, that's an array in Warren. And there's a method in rabbits called get female. So all we're doing is going through and asking if it's a female. If it is, add it to the number of females. If it's not, add it to the number of males. And then we can find the ratio at the end. In inspect, and again, this is Warren, We've just added this nice concatenated string to display it. If we go to the code. There's Warren. There's the uh, method. And we've added that to inspect. Let's have a little quick test. So let's move that down so you can see it. One, uh, four, one, one. So convenient, isn't it? That's one, one. 20, 18, 38 makes sense. 0. 0.9 sounds about right. So that looks like it's working for that. And 
if I was to go advanced time period showing details, that should also appear. There we go. 25, 25, 50. 39, 45, 84. Okay, that's fine. 8, 8, 16. 60, yep. So, because inspect nicely gets used, well, like, because inspect gets used in both showing detail and for the inspect, that's a really handy place to add the output for your uh, for your stat. All right, let's have a look at um, the fox stats. So the one that um, I thought we'd have a proper look at is average age of uh, average age at death, I should say. And there's a, a couple of things that we need to do before we sort of start to collect this stat. And then we'll, we'll actually look at the algorithm. We need to create a couple of things in simulation. And we need to add an array of dead foxes. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to copy every time a fox dies, the dead fox object into an array of dead foxes. And we're going to keep tabs of how many dead foxes we have with a dead fox count. This is quite similar to a couple of other um, structures within the code. So hopefully that's that feels fairly comfortable to you. In order for us to get an age, at the moment there's no way of directly getting the age of an animal. And I'm not putting it in fox, I'm going to put it in animal. Uh, you could put it in fox, but I think uh, this makes more sense. I'm just going to do a straightforward getter. Pretty dull, but it's, it's the easiest way of uh, doing it. Okay. Now the way we're actually going to copy that, create that dead fox array, as I said, is whenever we actually destroy the fox object in landscape, where we use this if fox check if dead, before we set that array element to nothing, we're just going to copy the fox to that array and increment the dead fox count. So then, once we've got a, a nice array of dead foxes, we can iterate through that and perform a, a calculation to work out the average. And we'll look, at, we'll look at that live in the code. OK, so I've created a new procedure. I guess this could have been a function that returns a value that displays this later on, but it's just easier to just do it all in one. And we've got a couple of uh, local variables just to handle various values that we're going to play with. And as you can see, we're going to iterate through our dead fox array. That's calling the method that I showed you a moment ago. And we're just going to create a sum of the ages of the dead foxes. At that stage, we divide by dead fox count, which I said that we were keeping a tally of, and we can um, display it. Hopefully that makes sense. Where do we actually call this? Well, if we're going to do it at the end of simulation, weirdly, that's at the end of new, because this new procedure is the one that handles that top level menu for when the simulation is actually running. So once fives happened or when the, the, the simulation is finished, I'm just going to call those stats. And so if you've got anything that's right at the end of the simulation producing the total number of rabbits or whatever it happens to be, that's probably where you need to stick it. Uh, we could put a couple of other things in there as well if we wanted to. One second. We could put a total number of foxes. Fox count is the current number of alive foxes. So hopefully if we add up the total number of alive foxes and the total number of dead foxes, that should be the total number of foxes in total. Don't think I've um, misconstrued either of those two values. That should be okay. And we could stick whatever else we wanted to. Let's have a little play with this, just so you can see it works. So default settings. Uh, I want to just quickly whiz through a few um, simulations 
otherwise uh, we will get slightly strange numbers. Well, let's exit. So we've, there's two foxes died apparently. The average age of death for a fox was 4.5 and the total number of foxes born was 5. So we've got three foxes left. One, two, three, plus the two foxes. Yeah, that should be five. Let's exit that. Right. Can you think of anything else we could calculate? Uh, there's loads of things. And I think... Especially if they do decide to do this as the last uh, question for some reason, you should expect something really obscure. I mean, they'll tell you how to calculate it, but it might be something that you really have to sort of perhaps um, work at. Uh, one thing that just as I was playing with this, I noticed was that the animal IDs increment for either a fox or a rabbit. So it's actually unique for the animals. and also says the the next or the last ID that's been assigned happens to be the total number of animals created. So a really quick way of getting the total number of animals created would be to um, look at the biggest ID that's ever been created or more accurately uh, look at the next ID which is uh, held in the animal class and go back one. So there's a, there's a few little things like that that if you really know your code well uh, could could help you out. Right, I hope you found that useful. Um, do play around with creating uh, loads more of those suggestions that, um, whoops, that I have thought of here. I think if you're able to do all of those then you uh, yeah you should you should have the flexibility to be able to do any stat you like. As always, feel free to add comments if you've got any questions, um, and particularly if you think I've done something wrong, if you see this is, I've made a mistake in one of my calculations, please, please say so that I can correct it. But otherwise, uh, I hope you're enjoying playing around with this code.